Welcome everyone to the future of data. I'm Mina Seitzer, the founder of Inclusive Tech, data evangelist. And um, we are an organization that is committed to drive diversity, equity, inclusion in the tech industry, as well as educate people about relevant technologies such as graph analytics. And today we will learn about graph analytics and how it actually shapes our world. And most of you who came here today were brought through graph analytics and most of you just don't know it because with the help of graph analytics, we're able to identify patterns, to connect the dots and generate insights. But if you ask most people about how much they know about graph analytics, the answer will be no. Doesn't matter if you work in a field of big data and artificial intelligence or not. And with the help of graph analytics, you can solve some of the most crucial issues in the world we are facing today, starting from money laundering, fraud detection, improving cancer research, and so many other fields. And that's why it is a breakthrough technology. And the mission of today is to shed some light into the dark and also really get to know about real life use cases from organizations. And that's why we have a panel of accomplished experts. And before we jump straight into it, I want to thank our partner Tiger Graph, the only scalable graph database for the enterprise who is um, jointly organizing this event with us and who are also facilitating a global competition called the Graph for All Million Dollar Challenge, where you can unite technology and impact and win up to 1 million US dollars in cash prizes. And uh, Navira Abbasi from Tiger Graph will also share more insights on this right after the panel and the Q&A. And I also want to thank Marina Schallermeyer, who approached us to collaborate with us. And we are quite happy about this partnership. And last but not least, my team. So thank you to Lyudmila Robleva, Diva Seitz, Marcia Putu, and Arabella Busiade, who made it possible today that all of us came together to this event. And now I would like to introduce you to the main acts of today's event. Welcome Adam Mustafa, Sepiti Jahangari, and Markus Franz. I'm quite happy to have you here today. Thank you. Thank you. So I would say ladies first, um, Adam, you are a technical solution engineer working at Tiger Graph. And before you joined Tiger Graph, you work at large scale organizations and um, in the field of business intelligence and big data technologies. And you're not only a data expert, you're also a trained software engineer who supports clients in the EMEA region and quite passionate about the topics around technology as well as gender diversity in the field of STEM. Welcome, Adam. Thank you for the great introduction, Mina. appreciate it. I'm happy to be part of this and uh, I just want to welcome everyone for uh, and thank you for uh, having spent some of your evening to talk about the wonderful world of graph analytics so definitely definitely I'm also quite happy that every one of you decided to celebrate this evening together with us on such a short notice because we started to promote the event I think one week ago and have over 150 registration and even more counting. So thank you for every single one of you coming and joining us today. Now let's move to the next lady in a round, Sepide Jahangari. Hi Sepide, you work as a data analytics specialist and as a customer engineer at Google Cloud and work with some of the largest companies in Germany in the field of media, entertainment, and publishing. Furthermore, you have a background in information science and um, also have implemented numerous data analytics solutions. And I'm quite excited to have you here today so you can also share with us your perspective um, from a customer engineering point of view. 
Um, thank you, Mina. It's also a pleasure from my side to um, be on board today with you. Um, this was an opportunity also for me to kind of polish my knowledge um, to see what um, we have in Google also for um, graph analytics. And all, I had also the chance to talk to a um, couple of customers about their use cases. And yeah, it's a great opportunity to be here. And I welcome also everyone on board. And I'm looking forward to a fruitful discussion for one hour. It's a love relationship, isn't it? Or a triangle, I should rather say, because Tiger Grab is working together with Google Cloud as well as Ipin Digital, which would be our so-called Hanum Corp, as we Germans like to say, Markus Franz, the chief technology officer of Ipin Digital, one of Germany's largest publishers, uh, not only in Germany, even in Austria, and perhaps Marcus could also share some insights about Ipen Digital and also on how they successfully adapted graph technology within their own organization. And if Marcus is not getting his hands dirty with graph analytics, then he's quite passionate about research, consulting, and um, as a computer scientist, also digging deeper into topics such as artificial intelligence and behavioral economics. Thanks, Marcus, for being with us here today. Thanks, Mina, for the um, great introduction. I'm happy to be here. I'm looking forward for the questions. Um, hopefully, um, I can explain what we are doing actually with um, the graph system um, and Tiger Graph. So looking forward for the questions. Yeah, the love triangle, and that's uh, pretty amazing. And today we also have some people here who actually never knew about graph analytics until this point and just joined us because they saw it is the future of data. And um, we're here to talk about it. And I would really love to play a little game with you. Perhaps some of you have might seen the Wired video series. If you haven't seen it yet, check it out, where they explain quite technical complex broken down into various levels of experience. And that's what we're trying to accomplish here. So imagine you need to explain graph analytics to a child, to a college grad student and an expert. And I would like to start with Adam. Adam, imagine I would be a five or six year old child and you would need to explain graph analytics to me. What is it? Great that you mentioned yourself, then I will set you up for the example. So Mina, I will pretend that you are the child, okay? And let's imagine that I'm asking you to uh, um, record all the information you know about uh, your neighborhood. So the automatic way of your thinking, you're gonna grab a piece of paper probably, and you will start uh, writing or mind map, right? Maybe you're going to start first with the kindest neighbors next door. Her name is Catherine and Catherine is married to John and both they have like two kids together, right? And um, then you know Chris and Chris is the father of uh, John and you know him because he's visiting his son every weekend and he's living across the street, right? And then you will go to the next kind neighbor and her name is Camilla, let's suppose. And Camilla is also married. She's married to, uh, um, uh, I, I said Tom, okay, she's John, she's married to Tom. And then Tom um, is working in the same company like uh, Chris, and then you will also draw that they are working together in the same company. And the, th the thing in common between the two families and you, which you know probably is they go usually to Cuba, yeah? So it's their favorite holiday spot. And then all of you together are living in Munich, okay? And then um, now if you're, you're going to think about this, uh, your brain will like picture that, will write it, will man, mind map it. And then if I go back now and talk about this, um, you know, Catherine as a person and John as a person. So in mathematics and in graph word, um, Catherine represents an entity, a person, what we call in uh, uh, graph theory, uh, a vertex. 
explorer of vertices. John is the same thing, he's a vertex. And then you have also Camilla, you have uh, Chris, and you have also Munich, it's a city, it's an entity, it represents a vertex in the graph theory word, yeah? And then let's talk about that relationship. So you, you draw, actually you, you wrote in this piece of paper that Catherine is married to uh, John, right? So that relationship, that marriage that brings Catherine and John together, that's in mathematics and graph theory, we call it an edge. That the link that connects between the two entities, the two vertex. And then it's the same thing for uh, Camilla and her husband. And all of them together, including you, you are connected the uh, link it in a relationship to Munich because all of you are living in Munich and Munich is another vertex in uh, in uh, in that uh, sense and all together all these entities all these people and um, also the company is a vertex and Munich all together the vertex the vertices and the links that connect them, these relationships, these edges, they compose the graph. So what I was explaining right now is a basic example of a knowledge graph. And that's how I would simply explain a graph to my grandmother or children, if I have children in the future. Thanks so much for the thorough explanation, Adam, and also for breaking down the terminologies with it. I had to think of modern family or the Kardashian clan because of the family <laughs> example. And um, yeah, that was um, quite descriptive. Thank you so much. Now I would hand over to you, Sebide. Um, imagine I'm not a child anymore, like several years passed and now I'm a college grad student. How would you explain graph analytics to me? Um, Mina, I guess um, the way Alan explained everything was great. The way you put it, um, we were also under, uh, able to understand it. But um, I guess a very um, tangible example of graph analytics is the social network. So we are all sort of the teenagers or the college student or active in the social networks. And um, um, coming from what Ahlem explains that we have kind of entities and then we have kind of that we call them vertex or vertices and we have the edges that represent the relationship between, between them. So in the social network, all of us, we are all kind of in the Instagram, Facebook, we all represent these vertices, we all a node. So if you, if you think about the graph, graph has a node and has edges. So we are all nodes or vertices in this um, network. And then the relationship that we have with them, different kind of relationships. So I may follow Marcos on the social networking, but I may also be friend and with Ahlem. So we follow each other um, bi-directional. I may post something on social network and the Marcos would, would then like my post or he would even um, comment on my post or he would even share my post. So that different relationship between me and Marcos as a person and this relationship could have also um, different strands. So based on the re relationship that we have, he may be influenced or I may be influenced by what he does or what he do, uh, he posts or what he writes. I may share uh, what he wrote before that that shows kind of a strong relationship that shows that I'm influenced by what Marcus does. And they are not only, so what Adam said, they are not only kind of people as vertices, they are also different things like posts or uh, articles or pictures. They are, they could also be kind of um, vertices. And I, as a person could have also relationship. I could like a post, I could post a post, I could comment on a post, I could have also relationship with other vertices. And this relationship between all these vertices shows how we are as a society connected to each other and how we kind of interact with each other and our interaction may not be always kind of direct but we may be both interested in the same post or in the same article and that's kind of how we could help graph analytics and we could with graph analytics we could help businesses to answer the business problems also lovely explanation. Thank you so much for breaking it down. And um, I also like a social media example because it is something that is quite tangible because we interact with it on a daily basis. And after that great example, I would hand over to you, Marcus. Like um, I graduated from college now 
attended university, worked a couple of years in the field of big data as a data analyst, data engineer, or data scientist. And now I'm asking myself why I should get my hands dirty with graph analytics. Why should I bother? What is it and why should I try it out? Yeah, really good question. The future of data um, is connected. Um, because in the business, even as an example, uh, in the publishing industry, it's not um, what you know or when something um, occurred. For example, um, subscription is one of our revenue streams. What we can answer right now, or even with the basic analytics um, tools, is when a subscription occurs. But what we didn't can't answer is how and why a subscription occurs. And for us, for example, the relationship between our audience, um, customers, what kind of articles um, they are reading with the content and the, the journey, what they are doing. Yeah. So decision intelligence um, is the way what we have um, to bring up in the teams. And it's always the question, why? Yeah. And, and how this kind of, for example, um, subscription um, occurs. And graph, it's a natural way to model that uh, in a system. The other thing is why you should get in touch with graph as soon as possible is, um, is you can explain a graph, your business experts relatively easily on a whiteboard. The connection, how the data is, uh, modeled, um, you don't have to talk with them about no SQL databases or columns um, or whatever. You can model with them together with the business experts um, how the data um, is connected and how the relationship um, is behind the data. The second thing is, the most important thing is there are a lot of graph algorithms out there. Yeah, uh, The social media um, example, uh, finding communities or also the publishing area um, finding um, documents that um, have the same um, 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 topic near. Yeah. And there are a lot of um, possibilities what you can model in a natural way um, without to transform um, tables yeah, and bring the data together. And one of the most important thing what we realized um, in the past is that with your data lake, for example, yeah, the data is siloed. Yeah, you have a lot of tables, um, but the data is not connected. And what we are doing is that we are combine every value stream, data stream, um, that we can analyze the data um, in a natural way, in an easy way. Thank you so much, Marcus. Now I really know why I should care about it. And also, I had this imagination in my head how the whiteboards at Ibn Digital look like, you know, when you explain it to people. Um, yeah, that is um, a really nice um, explanation. And um, yourself um, also um, introduced data mesh based on graph technology at Ibn Digital quite successfully. And um, I think for the people participating here, it would be quite interesting to know which use cases you were able to accomplish with it. Yeah. Um, let me explain data mesh um, first. So if your company grows yeah, and everyone wanna be um, um, data informed or data driven, um, the most companies have one centralized business intelligence unit, um, for example. And, but um, the business people, um, had a lot of questions, yeah? And the business intelligence unit um, have to answer that um, on request and respond pattern, I would say. We are throwing that kind of um, question um, to the team. At the end of the day, it, it will not scale. So a data mesh is a decentralized socio-technical approach to remove the borders um, of analytics data and business operation. Um, in our teams, in our cross-functional product teams, um, there's a special role called data owner. Uh, and, and this data owner is working day by day 
um, with these product teams um, to answer that kind of um, questions. And a data mesh is, yeah, it's an architectural and organiz organizational paradigm shift and based on four principles. And this is a really important principle because we are now seeing um, having domain data ownership. Yeah, we are seeing data as product with the whole product life cycle means getting a better understanding of the data day by day, um, continuous improve um, the data, um, working directly like with a whiteboard, for example, um, in the team with the business operational um, people. And the third principle is a self-serve data platform. So every team should um, should be able to answer their kind of questions um, with the self-serve um, platform. And the second, the, the last thing is that it's a computational federated um, governance. Um, this is the way how your data-driven, data-informed decision-making um, approach can scale um, in, in a company. Yeah, because you embed this kind of knowledge directly um, into the product teams. What we are doing, um, one of the first product, um, what we are built is a recommendation engine. In the graph database, we have three, we have a lot of more um, um, value streams, data value streams, but we have our whole articles in there. And we have the behavioral data, um, the analytics data from our customer in there. And it's relatively easily um, to make a recommendation algorithm based on um, the graph database. The really cool thing um, is that you are writing these kind of queries directly in the graph database and you can improve this algorithm um, um, step by step um, if you put more and more data um, inside. Uh, another important thing is that we are building a customer data platform um, um, on base of the um, graph um, database. Um, what does it mean? So at the end of the day, we need a better understanding about our customers, what they like, what they don't like, um, demographic um, aspects, um, and so on. Because we as a publisher, um, one of the main revenue streams is advertisement, yeah, for example. Um, but the advertisement market out there will change. Yeah, um, you all should be familiar with GDPR. Yeah, so third party tracking um, is um, not so easy um, at all. There will be a different approaches, um, but what we have to do is get rid of third party tracking. Yeah, and what we are building is a um, zero party strategy, um, getting the data directly from our customers um, to improve the advertisement. Awesome. Thanks so much for sharing these use cases with us. Now you talked about the opportunities that provided to Open Digital and later we will dig deeper also into the challenges you faced along the journey. And now I would hand over to Adam because Adam, you do not only work with uh, publishers, but also with various other industries who want to adapt graph technology within their organization and uh, really help them to get the most out of their data, either with Tiger Graph or any other graph analytics um, approach. And I would like to hear from your perspective, which opportunities this technology could provide to us. Um, thank you. So um, you, you mean uh, graph analytics? I mean, there are like different use cases in which we can um, use graph analytics. And one of the, as you mentioned, I've been involved actually in a few use cases since I joined Tiger Graph. And one of my favorite domain, um, which I'm passionate about, and I, I worked on this use cases is supply chain optimization and also um, procurement use cases. And, um, you know, like uh, the thing is, this technology now is transforming our world, you know? So that's simply because graph analytics is now like addressing big challenges. Um, for example, think about um, COVID, how COVID-19 and its variants, um, Delta, Omicron, have dramatically changed the way we work, the way we travel, the way uh, organizations deliver goods and products. Um, the pandemic affected everyone, yeah, on a global level. Um, so if we tackle this 
from a healthcare also. And that's one domain in which we could also use graph analytics. Um, uh, and since this disease is known to be contagious, so um, you can actually use a graph database to help government track the spread of the virus, you know? Another use case is, and here I'm going to speak from an experience, is, as I said, is supply chain optimization. And it's one of uh, my favorite industry domain uh, because, you know, like, um, and uh, thanks for uh, Marcus for bringing uh, graph analytics algorithms, uh, for example, such uh, uh, shortest path and uh, partitioning, um, these tools are uh, help to optimize, you know, routes and airlines and uh, transportation networks and uh, supply chain networks. And um, um, again, I will bring COVID. So think about what happened to the world for almost um, two years after uh, the COVID pandemic, right? So the whole travel industry stopped it for a while, literally stopped it, and then it was disrupted. And then the transportation was either stopped again or being delayed. And also the frequency of the trips has been reduced, you know? And in this case, cutting that risk of delays of trips being stopped will be translated into a big opportunity to help reduce um, and save the costs, you know, in the supply chain for customers. And I'm, uh, there are like a variety of customers, like we work, we work with automotive, we work with consumer uh, of goods who are running businesses uh, for billions of dollars. And you know, if something doesn't arrive at time, it could cost a lot of loss. And also like it costs you, you know, like, um, uh, angry customers and it's uh, something is affecting both manufacturers and um, customers and uh, how how we address th this kind of challenges in um, graph analytics in, uh, in general and how we do it at iGraph it's not only about preventing the risk yeah because if the assembly line is going to stop then what can you do with the software I mean you can do anything unless if you use the powerful graph analytics in, in a way that you can recalculate. And I mentioned again to the algorithm of shortest path, et cetera, you can bring that and you can recalculate probably a different way or a different part how to solve this problem. Or let's say you can have a problem uh, with the delivery from a supplier. He can deliver a certain product or a certain material um, and then uh, they can deliver the goods to you, yeah? So you can still track down maybe the possibility how to replace um, the component with other components uh, which would fit into your product and then resell it. So this is where uh, uh, how we can take that initiative, you know, to help uh, cover the risk. And it's a win-win situation, as I mentioned, for both manufacturer, manufacturer to continue with their profit and also for consumers who will like receive that good or product on time. Another one of the use cases which I like really a lot and uh, in, in which um, I, I would like here to mention something so the message uh, doesn't go wrong. Uh, graph analytics doesn't replace necessarily existing systems. We don't do that. And um, one, uh, this industry I'm talking about is a fraud and anti-money laundering, for example, yeah? And um, for example, we don't go there to the banks and tell them, hey, listen, just like remove everything you've been using, like uh, uh, tools like Nice Actimize or any kind of system they are using basically to, uh, uh, you know, track, uh, to, to fight uh, money laundering or for fraud. And uh, we don't do that. We just come as an enhancement, as a, like a complementary uh, tool to help you, you know, and uh, Marcus, again, he mentioned that very well, to understand that. Uh, so um, uh, and th this interconnection, you know, between data and systems are so sophist sophisticated and companies and banking and financial and uh, the financial industry, they they have a lot of data. They want to use all this data from different departments, from everywhere, yeah? And uh, before I continue to explain more about how graph analytics fit in this use case, I just want to highlight that uh, for those probably who don't have a background into uh, fraud and anti-money laundering, um, there is we, we have to the, make the difference between um, anti-money laundering. It's basically the process uh, which you uh, for which banks could be fined and really like a lot, <laughs> a lot of money, and uh, they could lose huge of amount of money, as I said, and also reputation um, and that sort of risk. And then there is a fraud, and fraud happens in real 
real time, which means banks and financial institutions should stop it in real time. Yeah. So this is like two different concepts for me. And uh, with graph analytics or how our customers currently are uh, using this, they have uh, tools in place for fraud detection. As I mentioned, we don't replace anything. We just came to, uh, to enhance and complement that uh analytics systems they have already and here they went more into the direction of using graph machine learning on connected data so uh we actually have one use case with an american bank uh, who have um were successfully able to 20 percent uplift uh their uh, uh, graph machine learning to improve their current uh, results and uh, for example let me give you um an idea about uh uh, how how it is working so um it's, it's not about only detecting fraud right uh, so for example you could be probably slowing down the uh, customer journey experience by not allowing um them to have a credit card or a loan for example why because you were looking at missing information you were looking at information which have lack of sense that could make them look actually through the uh, and uh, this missing information makes them look uh, fraudulent where they are actually genuine and uh, good actors so here graph analytics helps you not only to enhance the you know uh, experience of uh, uh, detecting uh, fraudulent bad actors but also mm. to, uh, I think um, one of the most important points that you mentioned that every one of us asked themselves is really understanding um, that it can be an enchantment to your existing data architecture. It's not like one or the other. You don't need to decide between data warehouse, data lake, data mesh, and uh, get rid of your existing um, data um, architecture that you have in place, but rather to look at the use cases you have within your organization and then find out whether graph technology helps you to accomplish these goals with the right technology. Because if we think about traditional um, data tools, it is quite the usual tabular approach. And if we think about graphs, um, it is actually more natural about the way how we approach data. And I think uh, that's a really good point you made, Adam, also as a takeaway for all our participants um, who joined us today. And um, ZPD, you also interact um, on a daily basis with decision makers um, of some of Germany's large uh, enterprises where you need to educate them and convince them about cloud technologies as well as other data analytics related tools. Now, um, what role does graph analytics play in the field of big data and artificial intelligence? And um, could it even create a competitive advantage for my business? Um, last question you asked. Yes, it could. And how, um, well, if what you mentioned at first, Mina, if we look at um, graph analytics as something that connects the dots. So in the world of data analytics, we never talk about not having the data. We have all the data we need, but we don't, we, we don't have the relationship between the data. So I, I agree with Marcos because of the GDPR, new regulation, iOS, that you cannot track users between different applications, within different websites. We now don't have any third party data or in the new future, no third party data at all. And for the first party data, we also have kind of, um, we, we, we are required to get the consent from the users to collect their data and to uh, target them for the marketing campaigns, for the emails. So we now have only first party data in a limited amount, so less data, but we have to do more. And, um, but that's still enough. All the data we have is enough. The only thing that we don't have is kind of the relationship that the data has together. So the connecting the dots, as you also said. 
And um, this is also the role that graph analytics could play because usually, so I don't want to promote any technology in the data warehousing and data lake. If you have all the data in a tabular format or in the um, any ecosystem on the Hadoop, we have all the table um, data in the tabular format, all the transaction, like in the social networking example, if I like something, it's just a log in the transaction. So it's a log that I liked something. But the data don't talk to each other. All this transaction, all these logs don't talk to each other. And this is kind of a huge effort for the businesses, for the enterprises. And in my case, I also work with publishers um, like uh, Marcos with the large publishers in Germany. And this is a kind of a huge concern for them because they want to target the right customers. They want to offer the personalization, the personalized offer to the customer. They don't want to spend their ads they because that costs too much. They ask they ads on some users who are not likely to buy. So they want to kind of evaluate the um, value of the customers and offer them what is actually kind of interesting to them. And they have the data. So they are kind of tracking the users between the different websites. With, between, so if the user opens a website, they know what, what the user actually clicks, how much they spend on the website. These are all the likes, but they don't have the relationship between this data. And the data is not only web analytics data, they have also data from, from the CRM systems. If a user is actually a subscriber or not, if a user is actually about something from them or not. So like what Marcus says, ads is actually kind of the main revenue stream when, when it comes to publishers. And the publishers have many data sources. They have serum systems, they have their sales data, they have their web analytics, um, Google analytics data. So they know who's, subscri who's subscriber and they know that the user in Munich opened the website, but they don't know if it's the same user or not. So they don't have the identity of the user. And this is actually one of the use cases that I guess Marcus also mentioned that in publisher, publisher industry, you could implement to actually connect the dots to each other. And in all the different data sources that you have to, to be able actually to, to identify the users and see the, the this users that open the website is actually the same user that is kind of subs has subscribed to some articles or to some authors or something. And to have this identity of the users and then you could then kind of track the user behavior in your website and based off the demographic, demographic data based on the, um, the clicks that they make under your data, then you could target them with right ads or you could train machine learning models, kind of predict the propensity of the users to see um, to see or to subscribe or to um, buy something from you or even to click on an ad uh, on your website. You could also train other machine learning models like um, recommendation engine. What's kind of the next best offer to offer them the next best product to see in form of a banner to kind of if they are into like if they watch a cooking or if they saw a sport news they might be also interested to buy kind of a t-shirt a sport t-shirt or something and uh, this is kind of so to kind of have a customer 360 view uh, kind of a holistic view of what customer is doing to identify the, the customers and to know the customers really and to be able to kind of reduce the cost of ads and increase the targeting and value and increase also the kind of customer lifetime value. This is another use case that you could kind of mention um, that is, I guess what graph analytics here does is a huge impact because the, um, the traditional or transactional databases or the usual data warehouses have only records. So it's kind of a huge effort for the data engineers or for, for data analysts. They have to first find the relationship between these records and they have, and this is kind of a huge effort. This requires, I, I have customers who are struggling for years to do this, to find the relationship between the records to identify the customer. And graph analytics gives you actually something, gives you the relationship. So, and 
finding the relationship is actually not something that you were looking for. So you're looking for the ants for solving your business problem. You are looking for, for example, targeting the right customer for your ads. You're not looking for um, creating this relationship. Relationships are actually where you start and graph analytics actually gives you a very good platform and very good and fundamental to a start with. So it gives you what you need to have to do the rest of your data journey. It sounds pretty amazing, especially you got me, you know, at a point where you said I can save uh, my costs on uh, advertisement spend and also maximize my ad revenue by acquiring more um, subscriptions. And this is also what um, Marcus, you accomplished at Ipen Digital so far, where you worked on use cases, focusing on reader centricity. And um, also, if I think about Ipen Digital, it is one of Germany's biggest success story if it comes down to digital transformation and the adoption of state-of-the-art technology. And um, what I would like to know from you is also what challenges you faced along the way when you started implementing graph technologies? Yeah, this is really, really good questions. Yeah, because we're always saying, yeah, it's, it's a cool technology and there's a lot of um, um, opportunities and, and you can enable and support your business. But graph is a different system like traditional databases. So, um, you need the time to think about your schema. What is a node? What is a edge? Um, how this data is um, connected? Um, how um, the labeling um, is behind? And you should also start um, to define the first use cases. Yeah, because the use cases in, in our experience will have an impact on the schema. Yeah, um, you can have the best schema, but at the end of the day, um, if the use case um, is not answered in milliseconds, yeah, because we are in the publishing, we need um, answers in milliseconds um, because we are in the real time business um, to get um, a recommendation um, to our customers. Um, you have always to think, you have to think about the schema and the use case. This is one big part. The second thing is we seeing graph as a living system because the schema evolves over time um, for example Zepidi had um, explained a customer lifetime value yeah and and uh, you have to always push the data into the graph um, system and this is um, um, a huge uh, challenge um, you have you need the expertise yeah. Um, with schema design, with schema evolving, yeah. how can I um, evolve um, schema? And, and one question from the audience is, uh, and this is a big point, how do you handle access rights? Yeah. Um, because we are combining every kind of data stream um, inside um, of um, our knowledge graph, yeah, sales information, marketing information, article information, um, but you have to keep in mind um, how do you uh, implement some kind um, of um, security layer. Yeah, but in, in the graph systems, um, you have often the possibility to have local graphs versus global graphs. Yeah, and, and with this kind um, of approach, um, you can build a, a security um, aspects inside of the graph. Awesome. Thank you so much, Marcus. And um, I think that's really good how you broke down each of these obstacles that probably um, you as a publisher as well as others um, faced independently, uh, whether you are in media and entertainment or not. And um, now I would um, love to ask um, Adam um, a question in regards to the adaption of um, graph analytics. So um, if um, you know, I would be an organization and um, approach you and um, how would you go about it? Um, because um, the first start would be to assess whether the technology is feasible for me or not. 
how yeah. would you do that and also how would you measure um, the success in adopting um, graph analytics uh, successfully? Yeah, sure. That's an amazing question because it will help people to understand if a graph is uh, feasible for them or not, and, and also how to approach any provider of graph. Uh, well, how we do it at Tiger Graph, um, actually, we do have really um, a process which starts, uh, which is falling into a division called customer success. Yeah, it's a, a big team. Uh, I will explain why. So we have a uh, um, pre, pre selection or pre qualification process. And in this phase, is uh, you will be probably talking to our SDRs, yeah? Uh, and uh, together, we will start an exercise in which we um, involve, we work as a team, uh, in which we will identify if your problem, first of all, is a graph-shaped problem, you, you know? Because sometimes maybe you don't need a graph at all. <laughs> or so, but we believe that if your data is so interconnected, then it is a graph analytics problem. But um, another thing that we do also during this process is, um, we are really very pre-selective pre in a way that we, we, we do also uh, help the customer and work together with them on how uh, to identify which use cases. And I can give you an example of uh, one of the, our biggest um, customer currently for con con consumer goods. So they have about 100 use case, right? But they were, um, they decided to go for one of them because they wanted to understand, uh, to ask the right questions. They, 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 they did this ex exercise to see, okay, I, I want to understand for a procurement use case, what kind of a product in which year I would buy uh, for uh, from which supplier answer these questions. Once you, we do this pre-selection, pre-qualification process, then you will end up probably working with people like me. So we are the pre-sales sales engineers. Um, what we do is actually we uh, we always work together with the customer. We do an exercise and here, uh, we're not only like helping you to fit uh, Tiger Graph into your uh, data analytics um, systems. We just, um, go uh, on the tiger graph. We also talk about uh, data connectors. We talk also about uh, uh, data visualization, yeah? And uh, uh, how we do it or how, how we help you to uh, um, calculate if this is going to work or not for, with you. So we define the business requirement, the technical requirement. Um, we define uh, together the technical architecture. And most importantly, uh, and usually it takes, um, it will be under a proof of value or an MVP. Uh, what we will do is define and success criteria. So I've worked with customers in supply chain. He's just said to me, you know, I want, I was like asking, we were like at the last, latest part of our deliver, delivery of this POV. And he said, you know what, I, I want this qu query to give me results um, very fast. I, I wanted before I sip the next, next coffee, I just want to see the results, you know, uh, it's going, uh, it's doing calculations and stuff. And then uh, I said, like, really, how, how fast do you want it? Three seconds? Okay, then we came back with one second response time. And that's how we do it. So we define really carefully the success criteria because that's given us credibility. And we allow also the customer to do their own internal tests. We, we deliver them uh, the solution. And in the beginning also what I want to mention that you are flexible to work with us um, on our managed cloud platform or on your cloud or on our cloud or on premise. So th there is, a, as Marcos mentioned, some of the challenges, I, I will come to, uh, to that at the end, but um, there is no challenge in learning, in the learning process. And now after we do this, after you test yourself and you see, uh, you test the product against your own success criteria that we define in the beginning. So if we are successful, we meet the success criteria, then there is two last steps, yeah? The next step will be working with our professional services. And here it's all our amazing engineers. They will do the delivery on production environment, on production deployment. And then uh, last but not least is our customer success team. And they are involved from the beginning until I'm not going to say the end because there is no end with customers. Uh, we just continue to support and to manage. They continue to support and manage uh, the entire process and licensing and that uh, customer experience, you know. Um, I would add only like uh, one last uh, thing. So all of these uh, teams together 
we work under one umbrella and under one division, and it is called customer success. And um, this, uh, this, the successful adoption of graph analytics is not only the provider uh, work or exercise, it's uh, a teamwork. Um, and uh, one of the successful use cases currently that I've been also involved uh, in is actually when we did all these processes together with the customer, they were even involved actively to create the graph schema. Uh, and this is part also of the POV MVP uh, phase in which we ourselves uh, create the graph schema um, entirely or the customer can be part of it. But we had customers, they wanted to be actively involved and they went so far to the point that actually the day of the final demo and delivery in front of uh, their MVPs, we have team of Tiger Graph, but also the data scientists who were involved and they were advocating for the solution. And that I found, I find it amazing. So we really appreciate and we, we have that kind of a culture within Tiger Graph that we work together from the beginning of pre-qualification, you know, the POV MVP exercise, deployment, and then presentation, and then finalizing licensing and everything. I think that's a really valuable point to really understand that you don't need to always start with the technology if something is really hyped up, such as artificial intelligence or machine learning, that decision makers feel, you know, the need to adapt it as fast as possible so they can say, okay, we are an AI driven company. Although it's much more, you know, a priority to really identify the business problems and goals and then ideate and find out how data and technology can support these use cases. Now, um, we are almost approaching the end of this panel discussion and I'd like to thank you really for your contributions and shedding some light into the dark. And one of the final questions is, um, what does the future of graph analytics look like from your own perspective? Um, the question um, is uh, directed um, towards every one of you. And I would start with CBD. Oh, sorry, I lost the button. <laughs> um, well, um, but I, I was listening to Alan, what she said, um, I guess Tiger Graph is going toward the right direction. For me, what um, there are many challenges, or I could say design consideration that I think the businesses have to consider when they are kind of considering um, graph analytics. Um, so maybe to sum up, graph analytics is not, um, Adam also mentioned, it's not kind of a replacement to the transactional databases because of many features that the transactional databases have if we talk about ACID principle. It's just a complementary to transactional databases. It doesn't answer to all the use cases like what Marcus said, um, you have to know the use case and you have to kind of um, traverse back to the data schema because it's not like a transactional databases that you put all the data there in case there comes a use case. First, you have to define the use cases and then come back to see how you want to um, define your graph as. But the future is, um, well, I guess there is a very fine line of what we do with machine learning and what we could do and achieve with graph analytics. I know like Tiger Graph offers this kind of built in machine learning libraries that you could just pick and then it would, um, I don't know if recommendation engine is for example, one of these, but the future would be to use the graph analytics to, to, um, to kind of overcome the challenges that we have with all the data that we have. So recommendation engine is one. So if I wanted to kind of use a graph analytics Maybe this is something that I could use to uh, immediately come to a recommendation engine immediately or, or to see how I could increase the lifetime value of the customer. Or, um, so this is kind of integrating a very, um, a very two kind of two discipline um, into one to have an interdisciplinary tool or technology to not only give us what, um, to not only give us the data but also to could answer kind of our business problem. And, and this would be great for all the businesses. And if they are considering this, um, that would be kind of a huge impact to know that they 
don't have to choose between technologies. They don't have to switch between technologies, go from one technology to the others and take data from one technologies, put it again in another to get to the answers, to be able to do everything in one place. Awesome, thank you so much. Now I would hand over to Adam, your final words. You hear me now, okay. So my final words, so um, I, I would be um, very like transparent with everybody. So graph analytics and the market is still young market. And one of the challenges um, is actually the lack of uh, the technical knowledge of some resources in order to um, basically uh, implement the graph uh, solutions, right? And then um, another thing is uh, the uh, so many uh, graph languages <laughs> that are uh, available in the market. And if you, uh, um, I would recommend learning G-SQL because our language is like close to the GQL, which is uh, currently the standard graph uh, language query. So that's also one challenging thing. And this um, uh, learning process, sometimes it sounds a bit, you know, like a nod for developer, but like it is named, it's, it is a, a, a language like SQL, like SQL. Um, um, and the last two challenges before I, I talk about the future of graph analytics is basically, uh, and this is something I care from my perspective, I care about it very much person, personally, is basically the visualization of uh, graph data. Uh, as I see it from my perspective, the current um, BI uh, visualization tools in the market, they don't fit to visualize um, graph data. Um, if we go to uh, connect it to this BI tools for visualization, it's, going, it's not going to give you the you know, powerful uh, features of graph analytics, all this math algorithms and uh, calculation or dependency, dependency diagram in which you can zoom in and out over 20 years, 100 years of data, you know, or this social network or this knowledge graph. So, and um, luckily, a type of graph and we, we, we make everybody happy. So we do have actually data connectors for this type of BI uh, tools for visualization. But my recommendation is like, we still need that kind of a visualization that fit uh, to uh, that show that powerful um, uh, uh, graph, yeah, analytics. And uh, the thing at Tiger Graph, we build also our own toolkit. It's uh, something on demand and we do it if it is really like of a need for the customer based on the use cases, etc. cetera. Um, that could be a challenge. And um, the last thing about graph analytics future, I, I see, and it's not only my words, it's got no words, you could uh, Google that yourself. So it's going uh, to growth, uh, to uh, big growth. It's, um, I, I believe every company that have data analytics systems are going to use a graph. And as I said, and everybody here together, like uh, uh, Spida and Marcus, uh, we all agree that we don't replace any existing systems. You know, we come to enhance. Uh, so I, I would say that there is really a lot of potential and graph doesn't only solve like customer, uh, like manufacturing problems or supply chain problems. It does indeed solve like really challenging and big problems for the good, you know, that serves the society, the world uh, we, were, we are working for. And I remember when I chose to do software engineering, I chose to do this because I believe that technology can help us, you know, to make our words better. So I know it's, it sounds very philosophic, but it's just really, it's um, the truth. And um, probably Navira also will uh, talk because uh, at Tiger Graph we also like have a certain initiative to uh, uh, encourage more people and companies and uh, uh, data scientists, data developers, all kind of uh, uh, IT professionals or, or uh, even like business users who might be interested in graph and learning graph, you know, to use this technology to solve su such challenges. Thanks so much for sharing your future outlook on graph technology, Adam. And um, now I would hand over um, to Marcus, um, your final words and um, perspective on the future of graph analytics. I guess graph um, will be at the end of the day, um, a business enabler in a lot of companies. And I see it um, the same. It's not a replacement 
um, from existing, um, for example, transactional um, analytics systems. Um, it's an additional um, system. And if you wanna, and then this is the most important part is, it's about the relationship. It's about paths inside um, of the data. And graph systems and graph analytics um, will get more and more involved in, in different um, businesses. Um, for example, um, where a graph system um, really fits in is um, for a data catalog. Yeah, um, describing existing um, data, even existing data in a transactional system um, or in a traditional system. Um, what does it mean, the data? Um, when was the last access on that data? And so on and so on um, to get the whole company involved into the insights yeah and and this is um, what i'm seeing uh, or looking forward is um, that a lot of more people yeah uh, not even the technical people um, get in touch um, with a uh, graph systems and what will have to be done is an easier access yeah because um, uh, there are different kind of um, language how i can uh, work with graph and tra traversal with a graph um, but there is not so a standard way um, right now so different kind of system using a different kind um, of language and um, and the lingua franca for, for analytics um, is SQL, right? Um, a lot of business people out there um, I'm using SQL. I'm looking forward um, that um, there will, at the end of the day, a global standard yeah, to work with different um, graph systems, um, but with one um, um, unified um, language. In the lingua franca of all data nerds, I love it <laughs> because it's also one of my favorite languages. Thank you so much for sharing your insights on the topic of graph analytics and how it is shaping our world. And I uh, also want to thank everyone um, for joining us uh, today. And also most of the questions in the chat have been answered by now, um, either by Adam or Navira. So um, thank you so much and an applause before I hand over to Navira. So I'm applauding to you. <laughs> Um, from my living room in Berlin and also hope that we can see each other in real life at some point of time if the pandemic is over or um, under other circumstances. And um, I would hand over the word to Navira Abassi, who is the manager of community strategic growth at Tiger Grab and also the brilliant mastermind behind the Grab for All Million Dollar Challenge and will share some insights with us today. Thanks for being here today. Yes, thank you so much, Mina, for organizing such an amazing panel. Loved everything that I've been hearing, music to my ears. Also, Marcus, I love what you said about Graph being a business enabler and like, which you can't, you know, you could, what we can see the what in traditional databases, but not the how and the why, um, and Graph makes that possible, right? So this is what, so excited to share this million dollar challenge with you all. I thank you for sticking behind. I know we're a bit over time, so I'll share my screen and uh, share a bit more information about how you can participate. Um, so why are we hosting this challenge? As of you all heard today, Graph is an amazing technology that is going to be a game changer for businesses all around the world. Our mission here at Tiger Graph is to help our customers improve the world with these deep insights and see the relationships, right? Um, so we launched this challenge to show the readiness of graph technology to take on these complicated data problems that we have today and empower people all across the globe to innovate and explore. So the mission or the focus of this million dollar challenge is a search for innovative ways to use graph technology um, to solve real problems. And in the end, we wanna see uh, projects that are both impactful, innovative, ambitious, and applicable, um, all that great stuff. And we think that all of you will be uh, excited to join because you'll get to uncover insights to real problems. You'll get the chance to win huge prizes. I'll talk about that in a moment and develop graph skills along the way. So it's a win-win. It's open to everyone. We highly encourage founders, data analysts, data scientists, developers, university students, we encourage you all, anyone who is passionate about solving problems with data, 
highly encourage you to join. Um, the contest is live. We went live on February 9th. Submissions are due on April 20th. So highly recommend you register ASAP so you can get access to a ton of resources. And then we'll announce the winner on the week of May 23rd at Tiger Graphs um, Graph Plus AI Summit. So a little bit more about like, what is a contest? What are you building? As I mentioned, this contest is about solving real problems. So what's unique about our Graph Raw Million Dollar Challenge is that you all can actually solve whatever problem you are passionate about. If you have a project you've been working on, or you've been doing some research on the side, or you've always dreamed of solving some world problem, you could use this contest to solve for that very thing. However, if you don't have a passion project or a problem statement that you want to design, you, we, we are also providing you 12 other challenges to pick from. These are challenges we curated uh, by talking with eight different domain experts outside of Tiger Graph. These are founders of healthcare startups, founders of nonprofits, and so forth. And they've come up with a list of actual problems they see in their domain today that can be solved with Graph. Um, so highly encourage you to check out these problems. There's a link there. Um, I'm assuming we'll be getting slides to this afterwards. So all the links will be there for you to check out and do a deep dive onto the challenges. Now, what are you building? You're gonna be using Tiger Graph's Graph Analytics platform to uncover these transformative solutions so that you can help solve for some of these problems and, and enable people to make better decisions. Um, what are you submitting at the end of the day on April 20th? Uh, all you have to do is declare the problem that you're solving for. So you either have to define your problem if it's different from this 12 or let us know which of these 12 you're picking, submit a short video demo of how your solution works Give us access to your GitHub repo so we could see your code. And then finally, explain your project strengths as it relates to those four categories I mentioned of how were you innovative, how were you impactful, how were you ambitious, how are you applicable. And there's a lot more detail on our website for the contest that outlines how the judging works. Now, finally, bling bling money. Um, we're giving away a million dollars total in cash prizes with the biggest prize being at 250,000. Uh, also really excited and my favorite prize category is women who graph. So I wanna get all of you women out there to participate. You could form a team or also participate as an individual, but we, we wanna get more women into graph. So we reserve a special prize just for women. Plus if, you, if your project is selected as a finalist, there's an additional way to win, which is getting your network to vote on your solution um, and so forth. And plus additional 12 other ways of winning down below. If you have a strong project in any one of the categories, there's additional ways of winning first, second, third. Um, and again, you could click on this link here where it says here, and it'll guide you through um, a bit more detail about the prizes and how to win and so forth. Quick thing about resources, I'm glad somebody asked about how to get up and going and learning Tiger Graph. Um, you don't have to know how to use Graph or Tiger Graph to do this challenge. We have a ton of resources for you to get started. First of all, we have weekly office hours twice a week. Uh, you can post questions on our community forum, plus there's ways of reaching us via email. We also have 24 seven access to a ton of learning resources that not only walk you through the, the ABCs of getting started with Tiger Graph, but we also have sample projects and other resources um, from Google and Plotly and all the other places to build on top of your solution. So if you wanna build a full stack app, if you wanna build data visualizations, we have all the resources to help you make that happen. And then finally, the main benefit to register early is you will start receiving emails with helpful information and reminders. Plus you'll get free access to our Tiger Graph Cloud account with 50 gigs. If you need more um, cloud credits, you could, you could submit a request, there's a link to a form there. Or additionally, if you want help with your problem statement and you wanna make sure your problem is like a graphy, uh, a graphy problem, you could also submit a form to get a uh, consultation. So again, I wanna keep this short and sweet. Uh, here's a big orange button link to sign up and register. Again, the submission deadline is April 20th, tick tock, tick tock. Um, the last, uh, the slide here has some quick links for you to go to. Uh, this website will walk you through who our judges are. We have um, over 30 judges from around the globe participating. 
this link will enable you to register. Where the Dev Post is a platform that's hosting the, the challenge, plus more ways of learning more about TigerGraph. So thank you so much for your time. It was wonderful meeting you all. Thank you so much, Navira, for organizing this challenge and really uniting um, impact and technology. And on top of that, winning real money on the table. So it's not made up <laughs> or virtual, um, it's real. So um, that's pretty amazing. Thank you so much for sharing it. And I hope that um, one or the other also feels encouraged um, to enter this competition and contribute um, towards these um, challenges. And last but not least, it would be wonderful if we can take um, a picture all together, if you could, um, you know, um, if you feel up to it, um, yeah, um, switch on your camera and um, kindly ask, okay they're together we picture now i can see you all and then i will take a screenshot and i see so many nice faces and thanks everyone for coming and i will do a countdown so three two one and go Okay, now the next slides, because there's so many people here today. <laughs> um, we need to do an another shot. Then we have the second slide. Three, two, one, and go. Okay, you will, okay, you will receive all of it um, by tomorrow, including the recording, as well as further information on Tiger Graph and the Graph for All Million Dollar Challenge. And I thank you so much for spending your precious evening with us and making the time to be here today. And um, in case you have any further question in regards to Tiger Graph, feel free to reach out either to Marina Schadermeyer, Navira Abassi, or um, Adem Mustafa. And um, if you're interested in inclusive tech, feel free to also approach us. And I wish you all a wonderful evening and hope to see some of you also in real life soon if um, the pandemic at some point of time also allows events face to face. Thank you, everyone. And Thank bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.